<clears throat> okay, this one, this video we're doing here is uh, is on a very popular hedger, Husqvarna Mix 2. And uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight on why yours is doing what it's doing. Uh, most of them pretty much have the same problem. Uh, it's more or less a design flaw. Uh, I just looked into it and they're going to continue making this particular... Uh, gear housing on, on the next generation, so it's going to continue being a problem. It may not be a problem for you if you're in a, a warmer climate, but where we are, there's so much rain, um, and the uh, water just gets into these gear housings, and then they eventually fail. I can't count how many warranty claims we've done on either one, either the HE3 uh, or the HE4, which is a telescopic one. A uh, huge amount of warranty claims uh, repairing them, uh, but anyway. So this particular um, gear housing, this is an HE3, so it's a shorty um, head, non-telescopic. You can see that it's pretty much bone dry. And uh, this particular customer, um, through other machines that we've worked on, he does religiously grease his units. But the problem with this is, the way that it's designed, it actually pushes out the grease uh, and then it lets the moisture in. So it's kind of a weird, weird setup. You can see the cover. Uh, you can see the basically the, the water marks on the grease. And it just enters through here and then it just gets all in the bearings here. This one here has an engine bearing on one side engine bearing you can see down there I'm going to take it apart and show you uh, engine bearing down in there and then it has a sort of gear assembly bearing here and that's where that sits and then if you look down there'll be the opposite uh, underneath here as well now what happens is uh, two scenarios one your uh, connecting rod the top one will fail more or less crunchy bearings in here rust water enters or this uh, bearing down into here where the uh, engine's shaft comes through it will basically uh, it'll basically blow itself apart and that bearing there will uh, all the balls will end up inside here and then it'll basically just be metal on metal with the shaft and then uh, it basically just locks up so here's a little bit of a taste of, of what you'll get. Uh, keep in mind the cover's off, but this is what'll happen here. So I can tell you by looking at this right now and uh, the noise that it's making there. So uh, it essentially gives you uh, this code. Right there, that's what I was looking for. So it gives you that code, it flashes red. And what that is is the resistance off of uh, all this going back into the, the control panel saying that there's too much resistance that uh, uh, not to work, technically. Okay, we're gonna take this screw off and this screw off and then we're gonna come back and I'll, I'll show you uh, exactly what's going on here. Okay, so that is uh, what it looks like when the gear housing comes out. You can see the kind of muddy color discoloration. And that bearing there is smooth as silk. So we know that's not what it is. And I'm going to turn this on here so you can see for yourself that she still runs. Uh, sounds terrible, so I'm going to tell you that uh, the bearing in there, when I clean it, I'm going to break this video out into two pieces because everybody's got an attention span of a chimpanzee these days. So uh, I'm going to break it up so you can have, you know, the beginning part and then the end part of how it gets cleaned out and to, into what to look for and how to do it yourself. But I can tell by that crunchy noise that that, uh, that bearing is definitely finished 
Now that's going to add to the resistance. But let's take a look at the gear housing. I can't even I can't even move this stuff. It's solid. It's cooked on. So it's cooked on the bottom and it's cooked on the top. These connecting rods. So you can see you can see the rust there. So basically, this is never going to run. Uh, this is not this is not technically fixable in its current form. We're gonna have to replace this whole thing. You can see that uh, the way that they've designed this is you it's a um, it's a teacup washer. So you need a special press to pop this thing off. And then there's pins in here that that have to come off here too. It's a very labor intensive um, situation to rebuild this entire thing. So. Uh, we're just going to change out the entire thing is brand new. It'll come as a complete set and Husqvarna is going to warranty this um, Particular unit for this customer and Okay, that's going to be part one of the of the video. I'm going to show you right now what uh, the gear housing should look like and uh, The connecting rods how smooth they should be Okay, this is out of a uh, like a, a good used gear assembly. So see how smooth that is? That's smooth too. And that's what it should spin like. No crunchy crunchy. So we're gonna do part two next week. I will give you the breakdown, show you how to clean it, show you what the bearing should look like, and uh, try and save you some money.